TYT's Ken Klippenstein has an exclusive and an amazing article where he has obtained leaked FBI documents that reveal the Bureau's priorities under Trump. And they kind of underscore some things we'd kind of heard in the past, but definitely prove what a lot of us were afraid of. And let's get right to it. Under President Trump, the FBI's official counterterrorism priorities have included black identity extremists, anti-authority extremists and animal rights slash environmental extremists, according to leaked bureau documents obtained exclusively by the Young Turks. So grave did the bureau consider the threat of black extremists, Ken writes, that from 2019 to 2020, using new designations, it listed the threat at the very top of its counterterrorism priorities above even terror groups like Al Qaeda. And guys, in case you think that it was like a random discriminatory uh, list meaning like, hey, it could have been that they were gonna put it in alphabetical order, but they just happened to put the black identity extremists at the top, etc. No, it was in order and and white supremacist extremists, which have been doing most of the killings in, in this country for the law since Trump's taken office, um, were ranked only a medium threat. Yeah. So all these mass shootings, the synagogues, the mosques, the malls, everything, that's a medium threat. At the very top was black people. And the FBI, these are their documents. We we obtained their documents. This, this is not our opinion, okay? Uh, did they cite a single black extremist attack? Not one, not one. Can I just say something really quickly about that? Because there is a case, uh, Rakim Balogun, which is often characterized as the uh, first attempted federal prosecution of a black identity extremist uh, since the FBI report about the supposed ideology. Uh, which is totally made up and ridiculous. But uh, Balogun, whose legal name is Christopher Daniels, was arrested in December 2017 when officers in riot gear pulled him and his 15 year old son out of their house and forced them to stand outside in the cold, handcuff them uh, in their underwear. Uh, Balogun spent the next five months in jail on a single illegal firearms possession charge. Now remember that, this is gonna be important with what I'm going to contrast this with. While well, prosecutors tried and failed to paint him as a domestic terrorist. Where did they get this information on Balogun? Of FBI agent testified that he had been under surveillance for two years since video of him at an open carry rally against police brutality circulated online, including on the right wing conspiracy site Infowars. Right, but so they're watching Alex Jones' uh, websites and going, "That's that's a threat." But <laughs> most specifically, it points to a totally natural response to police brutality, the epidemic of police brutality, which is to go somewhere and voice and do your First Amendment right to free, uh, you know, assembly and protest it. They link the idea of black identity extremism to like the Black Lives Matter movement. By the way, it's also your Second Amendment right. So uh, what do the right wing say all the time? Hey, listen, if the government becomes uh, tyrannical, we, that's why we need our guns. The guy shows up at an open carry rally protesting the government. Exactly what the right wing celebrates. That's why we have the second amendment. They're like, arrest him, arrest him, he's an extremist. And they listen to maniacs like Alex Jones. Meanwhile, white supremacists are doing massacres all across the country. Medium threat. There was what awesome happens? Buzz, what happens? Just really quick, there was an awesome BuzzFeed article today uh, chronicling back when the Black Panthers used to do open carry and all the right wingers who were like, we need gun control. Well, that's you when know, the NRA was, uh, that's when the NRA was for gun control. They stopped open carry in the state of California when the Black Panther Party marched to the Capitol with their guns out. And in fact, the guy who uh, signed that bill uh, into effect was Governor Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to contrast that, that situation that I mentioned the black identity extremists really quick to literal militia leader Larry Hopkins, which I know you guys have covered and I have covered in the past as well, who's free to terrorize immigrants. His militia was rounding up migrants at the border a hundred at a time. They, they portrayed themselves as police officers. Larry had uh, in his uh, record, uh, he was charged with uh, uh, impersonating a police officer in the past and, and he, is he was also brought on gun charges, but he his investigation and uh, his investigation and time under uh, like a police or, or time behind bars was way shorter than this dude. Okay, so like obviously, and we hear about this all the time. There was another guy in the uh, in the Coast Guard who was uh, who had like hit list and an arsenal of mm -hmm. weapons. He was uh, caught for a second, and then they released them once again. Like this is such a serious threat. And the DOJ and ex uh, officials inside of the FBI have openly admitted that uh, they've been ringing the alarm bells from inside the house for a little bit 
And, and yet no one seems to care about white supremacy and white supremacist terror, despite the fact that according to the ADL, 99% of all violent extremist murders that occurred in 2018 are all done in the hands of far right anti-government extremists and incel terror. Yeah, just to be accurate, 98%. 98, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, it's just specifically to your point, Ken goes through and outlines, uh, while 2023 guidance alludes to violent black extremist attacks, each of the specific attacks referenced were carried out by white supremacists. The 2018 attack on a synagogue in Pittsburgh, which killed 11. The 2019 attack on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, which killed 51. And the April 2019 attack on a synagogue in Poway, so, California. So the point being there that Haas stretched to find something that they could call black identity extremists. Even that was horribly uh, hypocritical, etc. But the FBI didn't even cite that. They're like, this is our top threat, but we have no specific examples of it. Now, when they get to the other threats, the medium threats, they're like, well, there's like pages of examples of <laughs> of, of those because those actually happen. Christopher Ray in public, when forced to testify to Congress, said, yes, the majority of the attacks are by white supremacists. Yeah. But in their own internal deliberations, and they're like, mm, the white supremacists only got them too much. Uh, for black identity extremists, which is a, a, a term that they used before, that was exposed a little while back and then they took heat for it. So they now came up with a different terminology for it, but it's the same exact language. They lifted the language from black identity extremists and put that same language into this new document. And, and they still motivated. consider them the top threat. And they have, even have programs like Iron Fist right. to go after black people in America. <laughs> guys, 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 right. the, the, the Luke the, Cage was too on the nose. Yeah, the yeah. intelligence agencies have never done this historically. This is obviously new stuff. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Cointelpro. But uh, yes, yeah. Hist we and have Hoover. white supremacist institutions that do white supremacy. And, and consider leftist movements subversive and anti-US and they will do everything in their power, including work with the KKK to make sure that they stop uh, leftist mobilization and uh, you know civil rights uh, activists from doing what they need to do. They were with the KKK in the past, but this is now, this is now. Yeah. This is as clear an example of government racism institutionalized as I have ever seen. Yeah. Iron Fist is designated as the term. I just can't believe they call it Iron Fist. It's designed to evolve and adapt to the ever-changing threat posed by black identity extremists. They're such cowards, dude. They are so scared. Like they're just wetting their diapers every day inside of the FBI. That's what's going on. Yeah, and so no matter how much white supremacists do the violence, their their emotions don't care about facts. So they go, well, I don't know, but I'm scared of black people. So I'm just gonna put them at the top and I'm gonna spend all of our efforts going after black people and not nearly enough going after the white extremists. And that's why they got away with it and did the, all these shootings. Do real law enforcement. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.